Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two American heroes sitting in front of us, so thank you both for serving in slightly different capacities but serving this country, so thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman mentioned the PACT Act, as, as did Senator Duckworth. Uh, when we talked uh, earlier, Ms. Bradshaw, on the phone, uh, you told me about a conversation with a young veteran, a woman whom you met in a store who told you that she, quote, used to be a veteran. Talk, talk to us, if you would, how we help ensure that veterans, particularly uh, women veterans, understand the VA is there for them. I've heard just, I hear repeatedly from people from, from the roundtables I do in the PACT Act that, well, somebody else deserves it more than I do. I don't really need these benefits. So talk about that. Thank you, Senator. There are so many veterans who, for many reasons, think that if they apply for their benefits, then it's taking benefits from someone else. And the only way I've been successful in getting them to at least listen a little bit is for them to realize that it's also for their families. Um, veterans definitely uh, have a mission and purpose, and they have that from the military. And when they get out, um, some of them really have these miscon misperceptions on what the VA offers. And so working through that, the PACT Act has been helpful. We've been able to have unprecedented numbers. We're at a 30% increase for, for claims, and we're also seeing a great uptick for the toxic exposures. But we still have veterans who think that because they didn't go to war, they don't qualify for VA. We have women veterans who think that because they only served one term, that they don't qualify for the VA. And, you know, just I know you talked about the roundtables that you're doing, Senator, at home. I do the same thing. I go out and speak as much as possible. And I'm always surprised at how many women just do not um, recognize the service that they have provided and they minimize it. And so, um, it is definitely a challenge, but even um, I did a, a roundtable at church, and I had a gentleman who um, had a Navy hat on, and I said, well, have you applied for PACT Act? And he said, no, no, I can't apply for VA because I never went to war. And I said, what do you mean? You, of course you did how many years? And he said, seven years in the Navy. I said, well, seven years, you definitely qualify. But even, and I won't mention any of the members, even staff, who have served here, who have deployed to Kuwait, didn't realize that her time in Kuwait, even though she's a guardsman, qualifies her for PACT Act. We just, it's, it's a conversation and working through and trying to figure out unique ways to communicate with our veterans. It can't just be through just MSOs and VSOs. We're going to have to get creative and we're going to have to re reach the veterans where they are. Thank you. And, uh Thank you for that answer, Ms. Bradshaw. Uh, you had talked about your own transition. I know Senator Murray had asked about that too, um, from from service to uh, to veteran status, if you will. And, and I'm particularly concerned about veterans' mental health during the transition process. We're working on legislation. I would just like a commitment to you from you if you would pledge to work us on that, work with us on that bill. Yes, Senator. If confirmed, I would. Thank you. Uh, last question. Senator Murray uh, talked about um, the the problems with the rollout. We know the, that the botched electronic record rollout has contributed to four veterans' deaths. I'm glad the VA taken, has taken the right steps to fix the system. We might obviously must prevent these kinds of incidents. However, while VA works towards these changes, there are five VAs still working in the current system. You, of course, know that. Uh, one of those is in Columbus. I've had extensive conversations with the Secretary of the VA about this. Tell us, if you would, what steps you'll take to protect veterans getting care from the VA that are currently using Oracle Cerner while working through the necessary fixes. Senator, first and foremost, making sure um, that our clinicians there know that we have their that we will support them, and that also any of the changes that they are seeing that they we now through Dr. Evans and through our. Um, leadership with the electronic healthcare record team, being able to address those issues so that we can quickly look at resolution, especially dealing with downtime, that seems to be a, a challenge that we're still working through. So uh, keeping those open lines of communication, making sure those five locations have the support that they need to be able to continue to execute to take care of our veterans, because that's the most important mission that we have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and Senator Hassan, thank you.